So we're finally here, Power Rangers Dino Fury Season 2 Episode 22, the big season finale for this series. And I gotta say, I loved this episode. Simon Bennett and his crew did an amazing job with this episode because I loved it from start to finish and I was really sad to see it end. But I was also happy because knowing what's happening with Cosmic Fury and Season 30 right around the corner coming eventually, we know that these characters' journey, their story, isn't over just yet. And it's only just beginning once again as they head out into space to find Lord Zed. But let's take it from the top and talk about Power Rangers Dino Fury Season 2 Episode 22, The Nemesis. So the episode begins with the Rangers trying to think of a plan to stop a Void Queen because her cocoon is about to explode second form cell style from Dragon Ball Z. So the Rangers and Void Knight have to think of a way to stop this thing from blowing up or it's going to take out the entire city and everyone with it who hasn't evacuated. So the Rangers teleport into Buzz Blast trying to think of a plan to stop Void Queen from exploding. And Zato here, right here, Zato in the start of the episode is willing to throw down his life and make a sacrifice to teleport Void Queen out of here to get people to safety. And that's kind of a prelude to what's going to happen later on in the episode where Zato is willing to make the noble sacrifice to save people around him, to save his friends, to save his planet. But Tarek says, give me the Dino Knight Morpher, and I'll turn into Void Knight one more time, and I'll teleport her out of there. And Void Knight does that. Tarek turns into Void Knight one last time, and I mean literally one last time, because he's able to teleport her out of there, and the Dino Knight Morpher is destroyed, which is kind of a good way to say, hey, we're probably done using Ryu's soldier footage and this outfit, which... It turns into the purple Void Knight form and not the brown one, which was kind of expected because I don't really see why they need to use the brown one. I mean, it showed up for like a total of like a couple of seconds in Ryu Soldier, if I remember correctly. So I guess they didn't really need to use that suit. It would have been a cool way to see uh, Tarek go from purple to brown, but seeing how Tarek kind of wears purple, like he's a purple ranger, it does make sense. But... The rangers teleport into the middle of the desert where they find Tarek and the Dino Knight Morpher is destroyed but they see what Void Queen has hatched the cocoon into and that is the Nemesis aka Eris from Ryu Soldier. And I gotta say this is a really cool concept with what they do with Eris because Eris was the final boss in Ryu Soldier but what they turn Eris into here is basically a giant monster and Void Queen controls from the inside and the special effects for it is freaking amazing. Simon Bennett said on Twitter that him and his team took four months working on this scene that we're going to be seeing later on in the episode and the payoff is definitely worth it with how beautiful this scene looks but the whole Nemesis cockpit that we get in this episode is so gross in a good way because it's all fleshy, it's all gooey and stuff like that because it's the inside of a stomach and Void Queen is controlling it with giant bones hanging down and she's pulling on those bones to sort of close the little hatchet up. So seeing how big the Nemesis is, the Rangers summon all their Zords for this final battle. And although I believe this Zord fight is lifted from Ryu's soldier, it's still a really cool giant Zord fight between all these different Zord formations and Nemesis because it's a really cool fight scene between all these Zords. And although I never saw the end of Ryu's soldier, I gotta say, this Zord fight scene is pretty freaking amazing. And the music in this episode of Power Rangers Dino Fury, or the music in Dino Fury in general, is freaking amazing because I feel like I feel like not enough people praise the music in Dino Fury because it is really good and really knows how to set the mood and the tone as you're watching it. So the big Zord fight, the Rangers have all their Zords destroyed and they're gone kaput and they're probably not coming back ever again. 
Feeling like their backs are against the wall, Zato then summons the Dino Master Saber, and he believes that this is the only option to destroy Void Queen and defeat the Nemesis. And once again, Zato is willing to throw down his life to defeat the Nemesis and to save this planet. So Zato in this entire episode is willing to sacrifice himself for the sake of this planet and the sake of the universe where he's willing to throw his life away and that's just freaking crazy to see him do that in this episode because you can see how desperate Zeta was getting as everything they do is just getting smacked around by Void Queen in the Nemesis. So you can see how desperate Zeta was trying to be in this fight and he doesn't care if he's destroyed because he wants to defeat freaking Void Queen. But Amelia says, don't do it, we can do another plan. And what we get is this awesome scene of the Rangers sliding across the Nemesis. This is all original, by the way. This is all original. This is what Simon and his team worked on for four months with this visual effects in the scene. And I gotta say, it looks lovely. When I saw this floating around on Twitter, my jaw dropped with how lovely it looked. I mean, this was probably like the entire highlight of the episode with how great this scene looked. So Amelia makes her way into the cockpit. She's hanging on and Void Queen's like, get out of here. And Amelia's like, you're my mom. And Void Queen's like, I'm not having any of that and kicks her off. And as Amelia is falling, Zato prepares to strike with the Dino Master Saber. And you have this scene where he jumps off the T-Rex Champion Zord and he gives a goodbye to the T-Rex Master Sword and says, goodbye, old friend. And that made me really sad because when Zato first summoned the Zord, he's like, hello, old friend. And then, and then in this episode, he's saying goodbye to him. And that was kind of a tearjerker moment in the episode when Zato was saying goodbye to the Zord. And that was just something. That just got a gut punch out of me. It's like, oh, he's saying goodbye to him. But Zato delivers a strike into the nemesis and sacrifices himself to destroy it as the giant monster zord creature like being comes crashing down and void queen falls out of it and she's like oh no what have you done and amelia quickly grabs her and says this and we get this big montage throughout this show and throughout the series where void queen finally learns that amelia is her daughter and turns back to normal at the end of the episode. But with everything all good now, there is a loss, and Zato is now gone. So the Rangers are sad that Zato is gone, and the Morphin Masters appear from a portal to take the Sporex away. And it's mostly green, blue, and red who show up. And they're like, good job Rangers, you did an excellent job. And the Rangers plea with the Morphin Masters to revive Zato because they've done it once before. And the Morphin Masters like, oh no, nah, sorry, we can't, fam. Um, but he will live on in your heart, so don't be sad because he's always with you. Which kind of made me be like, hey, hey, you guys did a bunch of other shit that bent the rules or Green did, like reviving steel and summoning rangers for the legendary battle but they're not gonna break this one rule again to bring back zato because he sacrificed his life for the sake of his planet and the universe i mean they're gonna be like uh nah zato's fine he's just hanging out in the morphin grid he's alive in your hearts so that kind of baffled me that they didn't do it they didn't sort of bend the rules in this one situation but I'm guessing if we never saw the leaks for Dino Fury White then maybe the reveal at the end would be more of an impact because we probably wouldn't see it coming but uh, Ion picks up the pendant that Zato has and then we get a time skip where six months has passed and everyone is living a happy normal life. Rafcons are living in Area 62 and Santora is pregnant now so Void Queen and Void King got busy and got it on and having another baby where Amelia will be a big sister now. Um, we have Ion that opened a cafe in the span of six months which is how did he do that? Don't you need like a degree and um, experience to do that? He just opened a cafe up in 
uh, New Zealand, I mean America, and he's sort of serving Rathcon cuisine, which is a nice little touch because you get to see Jane and Jay Borg have the uh, Florgan cake, but Jane also says, oh, I'm doing uh, Buzz Blast Angel Grove, which is a nice little reference because of MMPR, so she's like doing a Buzz Blast MMPR tribute or something like that. Um, but then we have characters like Izzy, where Izzy is a successful athlete and she's going to college now, which is good for her. That's great for Izzy. And then you have Harvey, where you see someone busking on the streets and Harvey walks up to him and he's like, I know you, you're Harvey, you're that famous musician, I love your videos. So everyone gets a happy ending at the end of Power Rangers Dino Fury, which is really great. Also, I want to point out that we see that Mucus and Slifer are now humans and they've started a circus which is really cool to see Campbell Cooley wearing the uh, Mr. Wiz outfit again and Slifer is now a traveling performer with Mucus which is really cool I like that even the villains got a bit of a happy ending in this show and we get to see we might see Mucus and Slifer in Cosmic Fury maybe if we're lucky I don't know but I want to see what circus adventures they're having on Earth. That'd be something really cool to see. But I'm glad that Slifer got a happy ending in Dino Fury. I kind of wish he got to do the greatest showman song that he did in Re Soldier, but they never adapted it. But this is close to a happy ending that we'll get for these characters. So suddenly the Rangers get an alert from Solon and Solon's like, someone's trying to get for our force fields, come quick. So the Rangers go to the base and they see a big white ominous glow in their base and Amelia thinks it's a ghost and she gets her phone ready to take a photo of it but then suddenly the white glow turns into Zato in his brand new Dino Fury white outfit. And this outfit a lot of people love, a lot of people hate. The one thing I've seen people dunking on with this outfit is the cape and sort of like the shoulder pads it's got because it does look very clothy. Not as clothy as the original Green Ranger shield from MMPR where that flopped around a lot. This looks kind of much more sturdier but I kind of wish that the little um, shoulder pads for the cape could have been made of the same material that the Morphin Masters have because that way you could kind of like tease that Zato has some kind of mo uh, Morphin Master power up his sleeve uh, and that'd be really cool to see but Zato is back because apparently Lord Zed broke free how did he break free no idea but he's out in space causing havoc so that's why Zato has to get the band together to track him down and that's where Power Rangers Dino Fury Season 2 ends, with the Rangers teleporting off, trying to find Lord Zed. Now, fun fact, if we never got a Season 30 of Power Rangers or Cosmic Fury never happened, then this would have been the ending for Dino Fury Season 2, and it would have ended on a cliffhanger, kind of in the same vein as RPM. Not as ominous and not as scary, but it would have been like a cool cliffhanger to have with these characters to show, hey, the Dino Fury Rangers are still around and they're still having adventures now out in space. But yeah, this is a good way to set up Cosmic Fury and I can't wait to see what they're going to do with it next. But what are my thoughts on Power Rangers Dino Fury Season 2 overall? Well, I love this season. I really loved it a lot. And I love this episode and the amount of effort that Simon and the gang put into it, like Russell, Hunter, um, Kai, Chance, Tessa, um, Jordan, everyone put in a lot of effort for these episodes. And I really loved the performance that everyone gave. But I'll probably do my little rambling talk about Power Rangers Dino Fury Season 2 later down the line, along with a bunch of other fan theories if they're not already taken. But... Anyway guys, I think that's going to bring my review of Power Rangers Dino Fury Season 2 Episode 22 to a close. I love this episode, I loved it a lot, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen in Cosmic Fury in 2023. But, what did you guys think of this episode? Tell me in the comment section down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. With that said, I'm going to bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. 
and I will see you guys later. Peace out, take care. Bye.